In this tutorial, we're going to walk through the Ogre basic tutorial introduction for Ogre version 1.9, where we will render some Ogre trays in an empty scene. To locate these tutorials and source code, please see the archived Ogre Tiki Wiki website linked in the video description. Also, you're going to want to make sure that your environment is set up with the following Ogre version 1.9, SDK built and installed, Ubuntu 18.04, which is optional. Eclipse with the C and C++ integrated development environment. If you need help setting up your environment, please watch the video titled How to Build and Install Ogre 1.9 on Ubuntu 18.04, which I will link in the description. To get started with this tutorial on Eclipse, please make sure that you've properly set up your Eclipse project as explained in the previous video. If you haven't already set up your project properties and configuration files, then please go ahead and do that. In this tutorial, I'm going to make sure that we have all the resource configuration file system passed from the default Ogre install to show you how to resolve some errors you may encounter. Uh, to locate the default resource configuration file, navigate to user local share Ogre and then grab the default resource configuration and just copy that into your project and overwrite. And it should look something like this. And for ease of use, I'm going to copy and paste this project with a new name so that way all my settings are preserved. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename this one to Ogre Basic Tutorial Template. And then I'm going to delete our previous source code. And then now I could go ahead and copy this project. And you will see that in our new project, if I go to the properties, all our includes and libraries are still preserved. Now let's go ahead and get started by renaming the Ogre Basic Tutorial Template to the tutorial we're working on now, which is the Ogre Basic Tutorial Intro. And we can minimize the previous template we've created. And within our new project, let's go ahead and look at the web page. And we're going to need a base application header, a base application C++, a tutorial application header, and a tutorial application C++. So let's go ahead and create those files. The headers will go under include. And you could do new file, header file. And we're going to name this base application.h. And then let's go ahead and make a new one for the tutorial application. And then under source, let's go ahead and make the new base application. CPP. Then let's go ahead and create our tutorial application CPP. Okay, now that those are created, let's go ahead and pull up our source code, which is linked in the video description. And make sure you match the file name. And just go ahead and select and drag everything, starting with the first comment bracket all the way down to the very end. And copy and paste that into the file. And just delete over whatever content Eclipse previously made. And once it's all in there, then just go ahead and save it. And you'll know it's saved when the star goes away. And do the same for the rest of the files. And as you start pasting your code in here, then you'll notice a lot of red errors start popping up. This is okay. They will soon be resolved. So just go ahead and double check and make sure all your files are saved. And 
to start out, let's just go ahead and right click on the project root folder and go down to build project. And then in the console view down below, we'll see the progress of the build. And it says we're at 20% right now. This may take a few seconds. And if all worked well, then you should get zero errors. And you may see some warnings, which are OK. And if the project builds properly, then you'll see a binary is created. And then within the binaries, you'll see the actual application that will run. So what you could do is you could either right click on this to run or you can actually just go to the root of the folder and run. And once it successfully starts running, then you should see this render settings window pop, in, pop open. And then you could go ahead and select OpenGL. And I'm gonna turn off full screen, but you could do whatever you prefer. And I'm just gonna lower the resolution and accept. And right off the bat, we'll see that that window just shuts down. And if we look inside our console and maximize it, we will start seeing some red errors. So if I start scrolling up from the bottom, then I'll start resolving these errors uh, from the bottom up. And uh, the first one I see here says, ogre exception, file not found. Uh, cannot locate resource, shadows, GL, SL. So to solve this, I'm going to go ahead and copy that file name and then I'm going to open up my file directory and I'm going to go to user local share ogre and then I'm pretty sure that file is going to be somewhere within here. So I'm going to search and paste the file name and then we'll see that uh, a few of these files actually popped up. But we're just going to go ahead with the first one that we see here, which is Media Materials Programs GLSL. And I'm going to right click and look at the properties and just go ahead and copy this whole file path right here. And then let's go back to our project and minimize the console. And then if you go to your resource configuration, then let's just go ahead and add that path. So to do that, just go ahead and create a new line. Uh, you can put this anywhere, really. I'm just going to go down below. And uh, let's do file system equals, and then paste the path, and then save. And then let's try running our project again. Run as local C++ application. OK, it should run, and it should remember your settings. Now we can see that the tutorial application render window is open and running without it crashing, so that means everything's working fine. Now that we have our tutorial working, let's go ahead and figure out what's happening under the hood. The framework consists of two classes, the base application and the tutorial application. The base application is a pure virtual class because it contains a pure virtual function create scene. Such a class cannot be instantiated. Instead, it is meant to be used as a base class. If you're familiar with Java or C++, then base application can be thought of somewhat like an interface. It is never meant to be used on its own. Tutorial application derives from the base application, therefore must implement its own version of create scene. The base application inherits from five different listeners. The frame listener, which provides callback functions related to the steps involved in rendering frames. It includes functions like frame started, frame rendering queued, frame ended. Next, we have the window event listener, which provides callback functions related to the window events like clicking the close button. It includes functions like window closed, window moved, window resized. Next, we have the key listener, which is a class from OIS, which provides callbacks related to keyboard events. It includes functions like key pressed and key released. Next, we have the mouse listener, which is a class from OIS that provides callback related mouse events. It includes functions like mouse moved, mouse pressed, and mouse released. 
Finally, we have the SDK tray listener, which is part of the Ogre Bytes sample framework included in every Ogre SDK. It is used to provide just GUI events and simple UI elements. Now let's go ahead and see how it all works within the base application C++ file. The very first function to be called is the go function. Within the go function, we'll see that the resource configuration and the plugins configuration will be checked to see if they already exist. And once that is finished, then the setup function will be called. And within the setup function, the root's going to be created with the plugins configuration. Then the resources are going to be set up. And then the dialog tray is going to be prompted to the user to set their preferences. Next, the scene manager is going to be created, a camera is going to be created, a viewport is going to be created, and then next, the resource listeners is going to be created and loaded, and then next, the scene is going to be loaded, and finally, the scene frame listener is going to be created. Once all that's finished, then we'll see that the rendering loop starts until it is destroyed. If you want to find more information about how these functions work, just go ahead and search through them and follow along what's happening. Next, let's go ahead and look inside our tutorial application file where we will see our create scene function. In this function, we're going to go ahead and start populating the scene in future tutorials.